article is very nice, very readable, even for our undergraduates, with some hints of higher level math associated there. And there is also the other article. It's not actually not published yet, uh, but there is the, it's an archive, and then it shows uh, really the potential of the subject. I will mention maybe in the last uh, slide uh, some of these extensions to some higher brow mathematics. Okay, but we'll start very simple. Okay, so here is the, uh, we take a very simple model of bicycling. The most primitive, embarrassingly uh, primitive model of bicycling. So you see there's three positions of the bicycle, watch for, uh, seen from above. There is uh, the two tracks, right? there is the B, the, the back wheel track, the interior, uh, let's see, does it work? Yes, this is the interior one, and there is the exterior one, okay? And there's only one rule, okay? There is the bicycle length, right? The, 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 the distance between the center of the front wheel and the back wheel, it is constant, of course. Rigid bicycle. Uh, and, uh, you know, mathematicians, of course, come up with all kinds of crazy extensions, but we keep to the... Uh, very down to earth, real bicycle. Well, not so real. Uh, actually, bicycle is much more complicated than that. The only con the only thing that we take from bi from a uh, bicycle is this condition written here. You see, in each in each moment, the back wheel cannot move, of course. So the back wheel, the kind of the no skid condition, right? That the back wheel is not moving sideways. It's always moving along the direction. Let's say the center of the back wheel is moving along the direction that the back wheel is is pointing. So this is called the no skid condition. No resbalar. Si? Pregunta? Okay. I'm so, I can't hear. If you're lucky. If you're lucky, exactly. If you're not if you're not skidding, there's no oil or something. So this is the, called the no skid condition. You know, when you park a car, you are also limited exactly by this uh, condition. You have to kind of always to, uh, to adjust to this uh, condition. That's the back wheel. The front wheel, because of the uh, what do you call it in English? I forget. Uh, the one, the manobrium. See that? Because of this thing, you can you can uh, adjust it. Handlebar, handlebar, of course. Okay. Actually, I, I learned handlebar before I learned a Spanish word, so, but I forgot it. So, um, okay. Here I show you some uh, animation. I made some animations, especially for this talk. So, more animations than formulas. Okay, let's see if this works. So see, this is more simplified version. There is a, this is the back, the back track. I will always uh, put in red or orange, whatever color it's looked, and the front track is blue. Okay, here it goes. So you're riding along nicely. I don't, I don't show the front wheel and this handlebar or anything. It's kind of obvious from the picture, right? And and you can see that we are always watching this no skid condition for the back wheel. Is it clear? This is very important. This is the definition of this, everything that's going on afterwards. And it's kind of amazing that you can get uh, so much from this uh, it's very simple uh, model. Okay, I'll show you some other. Uh, here's another one. This is more artistic bicycling. You see, well, sometimes this is like in a, in a circus. Like sometimes the 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 back goes backwards. You see, it switches direction. The front, see, we you, you, as we see later, we need big bicycle for that compared to the uh, front wheel uh, track size. You see, and so there are cusps. The 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 front wheel. Uh, path is smooth always in our model, but the back wheel will have cusp. The cusp occur exactly when you're when the, the you're 90 degrees. Maybe, I don't know if I can stop it. I can do it better here. Okay, so so what, where, where do, when does it happen that you have a cusp? You see, well, let's go forward. You're going forward now. But now, you have you have a cusp. Let me see. It's better here. Okay, here we go. We are going 
here forward, and then there is a cusp. The cusp. Anyway, I'm not good at controlling this so much. Afterwards, people want to play with this. I have lots of these toys. Okay, so that's that's the thing. Yes, it can be pretty complicated, huh? Look at that. Back, you go backward, forward. Okay, so this is a basic phenomenon that can happen. That the back wheel, the red, the back wheel path, the the, the red thing will have cusps. The semi-cubical cusp, you can look at it generically, and then that's where the bicycle direction, the the, fr the back wheel kind of goes, starts going backwards. If you put an odometer on the back wheel, it will kind of go back, right? It will sort of subtract from the from the length. We have to, to measure the length of the back wheel, we have to measure with a sign. Pretty complicated, huh? Let's see if some other guys. Here is another one. This is one of my favorites. We'll, we'll come back to this uh, later. You see what happens? You're just going in a circle. The front wheel going in a circle. How many times you go around the blue circle before the, you come back to your original position? Can anyone guess? Not three, of course. <laughs> Four. <laughs> You go four times. It's a, it's a, the, the, the front. We say that the front path is a multiple circle, four times a circle, okay? And then the back path closes up. All right. This has a remarkable property. I will speak uh, in a moment about what I call the bicycle monodromy of a curve, and this has some remarkable. Not so easy to come up with this thing. So okay. So this is bicycling in a plane. Huh? Then we move on. Hopefully, if I don't get stuck on these toys too much, I will move on to three-dimensional bicycling. Um, here's a, a, you know, there's a famous uh, curve called the Tractrix. It's very, it's probably 17th, 18th century object. This is also produced by bicycling, okay? The Tractrix. You sort of, you can, sometimes you can imagine a so you're going backwards, the back wheel, and then you go forward. And you can see very clearly where how it's where the cusp is created exactly when the, the handlebar is forming 90 degrees with the bicycle. That's exactly the condition where a cusp is formed. All right, questions? Clear? This is the warm up, okay? So now we start with ah, here's another before this, with another there's an amusing puzzle, maybe some of you know. I kind of do it for the high school kids in the, in the workshop, I show them. So you have, you have this, the puzzle is like this, like Sherlock Holmes style st uh, puzzle. You have, like you have two paths, right? The tracks, bi a bicycle wheel tracks left on the mud after the criminal is left or something like that. And you are the detective and you look at it and you have to say, which way did the bicycle go? I mean, I don't know, one of the tracks is back wheel. I don't put colors here, huh? I want to keep the puzzle. So one of, the, one of them is, is, is back, red in my notation, and one of them is blue, we don't, I don't tell you which, and they're going in some direction, right? Some was, was he getting to the crime scene or was he escaping from the crime scene? You look at it, can you guess? I gave you enough information in the slides before to solve this puzzle, I claim. So can you? All right, let's analyze it together with your permission. So, is it? It could be this way. I mean, that this, that this, that this is the back track going this way. Obviously not. So look, look where is the, look where is the the front track should be here, not here. So obviously that's not the right option, right? There are like four, you know, front, back. Let's t take another one. Could it be going this way? Because the same argument. It couldn't be. So this, so so we just eliminated the possibility that this is back. So this is not back. So this should be front, right? So let's go for the other guy. Could it be this way? Now I'm now I'm making this one the back track and trying. So if so, it has to be the bicycle has to be this way. You have to reach all the way to this other track, right? If you want to be so, let's go. But let's ride along. Ah. But it's, if, if I don't want to change the bicycle size along my 
ride, which I shouldn't ride. I'm assuming it's not a rubber bicycle, it's a metal bicycle. So, so this is not, this doesn't work. So let's go for the fourth and last possibility. I was unlucky of, so this is no. So let's try this way, right? Now, same, this is the back track, but now I'm going, you know, from south to north. Let's try along the way. Yay, works, works, works. This is the one, all right? Now you can tell your friends and little brothers and sisters, show them a puzzle. All right. So this illustrates again the no skid condition. It is a strong condition. Actually, if you take a pair of curves in a plane, almost never they satisfy. I mean, you check four possibilities, none of them is satisfied. So it's. OK, here's the theorem, the first theorem. It's an easy theorem. Uh, it tells you about that the area swept by the bicycle is a very simple formula. Yeah? Actually tells you that if the, 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 the front, the back wheel could stand still. Yes? And then it's an area swept by the, by the, by the uh, bicycle, right? And the proof actually is very is very simple. You can make it into a proof. You sort of break up this yellow thing into small triangles, right? And then you just join them, just slide them together, and you can see that they make up a, a, a whole circle of uh, of this area. So this is a, a rather it's, it's amusing, but it's a rather simple uh, result. Here I apply it. Actually, it doesn't have to close the curves, all right? We can, it's, it's actually the right way to calculate, you know, without entering into complicated integrals, to calculate the area under the track tricks. See? Why is it pi over 2? I take a bicycle of length 1. Yeah, because exactly the bicycle is sweeping, you know, half a circle. If you, if you, if you imagine, you know, the, the, the angle is changing by pi. So, so if, you, if you slide all these small triangles, you get pi over 2. So that's the, the correct quick way without integrals to calculate the area under a track tricks. OK? All right. If you didn't get it, never mind. We continue. OK, here we, we, we start raising the, uh, introducing some real mathematics. I mean, this was also nice mathematics before, but now we're just higher level. So what do we do? We, we consider the following thing. We take kind of discriminatory, discriminatory actions. We, disc we, we give a privilege to the front track, right? We say that the front track, right, usually we ride along the front path, right? You don't ride along the right. So, so that's it. But how do you ride along? You first have to put the bicycle right. You put the bicycle, you orient it, orient it initially in some position, direction, right? Doesn't have to be tangent to the to the initial, and then you just ride along, right? Here you ride along, here, and then you your back wheel trace some. Uh, see, you see that this is tangent in the beginning, this red, and tangent in the end, and it was tangent all the way. I didn't put animation, but and so you from initial direction, this is the initial one. I get a final direction. Right, I get a transformation. It get a circle map. You see, I get a circle map depending for each curve in the plane, closed curve in the plane. In this case, okay, each closed. It doesn't have to be embedded. It can be immersed. A closed curve in the plane. I get a circle map. I take a, I pick a point, and I get from the initial position. It depends, of course, on the bicycle length. For different bicycle lengths, you get different circle maps. And from the initial position to the end position, right? So it's a map from the circle to the circle. That's the central object of this whole lecture, the bicycle monodrama, we call it, right? Of course, it's not, it's, I, I denote the notation, I put it depending only on gamma and L, but it depends on, of course, on the initial point. I didn't put the initial point, but we know. If you change the initial point, you just change by conjugation, all right? So it's well defined up to conjugation. Uh, this map, all right? But the, so all these concepts that we apply to it uh, will be con uh, conjugation independent. Okay, so that's the bicycle monodromy. And here is the theorem. The theorem was proved in the 90s. Somebody noticed it. It's very nice. So this bicycle 
map, this bicycle monodromy, this circle map is not arbitrary. It's what's so called a Mabius transformation. Yeah, it's one of the most famous classical uh, groups. And uh, so we have to look in this, yeah, and uh, this group. And I will no, now look at it. So here's the proof first. What is the proof? The proof is very simple. Uh, there are many ways to to parameterize this this circle of possible bicycle directions, right? So the best way is what's so called a projective uh, put a projective coordinate, do kind of like stereographic projection from one of the points on a line. On this line is like a P line, and then you write and differential equation that capture exactly this this no skid condition it's pretty simple i will not go through this now it's a nice exercise and you get an ode first order ode it tells you how you should reorient the bicycle along the curve right as you ride along and so to, to keep this no skid condition and it, it, it is this uh, differential equations of course the bicycle length here here is this uh, this is the this capture the the gamma. The, actually, you only need to know the the direction and the velocity at each point. But the main thing to notice about this this equation is not linear. It's it's, it's quadratic, and this this is what's so called a Riccati equation. Uh, a Riccati equation is well known. It's a, it's a it's a kind of a projectivization of a linear equation, right? So it's flow. That's what we're looking at is by projectivizing linear transformation. So it's Exactly the Mabius transformations. Okay, so this is okay. This is the standard argument. Let's explore the consequences so it's easier to digest what's what it means. So Mabius transformations. These are these are maybe usually we see them in complex analysis course, right? In with complex variables, but here everything is real. Okay, so yeah, this is this is P A B C D. This is it's called. A maybe transformation or fractional linear transformation, sometimes it is called. And uh, what? So, so you know, you look for fixed points. Yeah, the first classification, rough classification of them is by the the properties of fixed points. So, the fixed point is like a quadratic equation. If you write an equation for a fixed point and it's over the real, so it has may have no solution, one solution, two solutions. So, um, so here are the. So I'm showing you. If you look at it in the real line, so it's very easy. The one the kind of expansion, you know, it's one type of maybe it's transformation. This is like has two fixed points. One is p equal to zero. Another one is an infinity, right? So there are two fixed points, and then you have the one fixed point. This translation only the point in infinity is 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 fixed, and then you can have no fixed points. You, I write it like that, but it's actually better to look at it in the circle. It's just rotation, yeah, rotations of the circle. These are the, these are these are elliptic ones, no fixed point. And there's another one, trivial. Just you know, it's a group. It has an identity element. This turns out to be highly non-trivial huh? <laughs> to, to find to find curves with trivial monodromy. It can happen. Let's look at some examples. Huh? How does it look in real life? This this thing. So we had curves around us all our life, but we never knew that we have this interesting classification of, of these types. Yes. The parameter. Which parameter? Yeah. Well. This A, B, C, D. Well, A, B, C, D by themselves don't have much meaning because it, it, you, have to, you have to to make something which is conjugate invariant. So the main thing, the, the more important thing, is exactly what I'm saying. You know that I, you know number of fixed points and also this rotation angle. It, you have to give more geometric meaning, not A, B, C, D them, themselves. So that's what I'm doing now, right? I will show you what does. I mean, you can write uh, hyperbolic, parabolic, and elliptic in terms of A, B, C, D, right? It's something like the trace of the, yes, in terms of the trace is bigger or less than two. You can write formula in terms of A, B, C, D, but the geometric meaning of this formula is exactly what I'm writing, okay? That is the, the structure of fixed points, and then one fixed point is attractive, another one is repelling, Okay, so that's the geometric meaning of that. Let's let's see what it looks like on on on, on curves. What does it mean? So, uh, 
Okay. So first, an obvious definition. I said that the closed curve is hyperbolic, parabolic, elliptic. If tri trivial, if it's monodromy, is like that. And of course, this is L dependent. The bicycle monodromy of a curve depends. There's a parameter involved. Actually, we get an infinitely many for each parameter value for each bicycle size. A given curve, you have an adjective. It is hyperbolic with respect to bicycle riding with this length, elliptic, etc. Okay. Here's a hyperbolic. Okay. So usually in real life bicycling, most curves are hyperbolic. Why? Because the bicycle is small, right, compared to the curve. If you're riding in some in the circus on a small stage, yes, you can be riding in some extremely small trajectories. But usually we ride along big trajectories, and the, and the, and and that's that's the situation. You see, actually, so that two. So what does it mean a fixed point? Let's think for a second. What does it mean a fixed point of the monodromy? A fixed point monodromy means that the end orientation of the bicycle is equal to the beginning orientation, meaning that the back track is closed. Usually it doesn't have to close up. The, I mean, the front track closes up and you ride along, and if the, the end orientation of the bicycle is not the same as the, as, the, as the initial one, then it doesn't close up the red curve, right? Fixed point of the monodromy means it does close up. So if you are hyperbolic, meaning there are two initial orientations for which the red the back track closes up. And here I'm showing you for an ellipse, all right? This is was done in a, with, the, with the mathematics of the computer, and we just, the computer found exactly what are the, the, the this, one, this is one, I'm look, starting here. If you start like this, it, it, you are close up. And there's another one. Now these two are pretty obvious because of the symmetries of the ellipse. I'll show you another one where it's not obvious at all. Here, arbitrary one. You see, this is one. It's another hyperbolic monodromy when the L is small enough. Okay. All right. So this is the hyperbolic monodromy. Okay. Questions? Did I answer your question from before, Claudio? Okay. Good. Let's see another case. A parabolic monodromy. Parabolic monodromy is interesting. We'll see later. You see, you must have cusps in the rear uh, wheel. In fact, the length is zero, meaning the algebraic length. We're going backwards as much as we're going forward with the back wheel. We'll sh we will prove it in a moment with some nice formula. Okay. So that's 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 parabolic situation. Elliptic, uh, elliptic one. Elliptic means, you see, I start in this position, and it doesn't close up. I will end up with this position. You see, it doesn't close up. Here I'm making a little animation. I try other initial orientation, and I always fail. Look, this shows you I'm going. I'm sweeping through all the possible initial. Uh, orientation and for each one I'm looking at what is the resulting back track and they never closes up all right it's actually you can see that it's always kind of some positive uh, there's always some positive rotation the end the end orientation is always positively rotated with respect to the initial orientation that's exactly elliptic maybe transformation it's con it's not rotation but it's conjugate to a rotation of the circle of orientations okay so it's so that's and that and it's not an accident that the bicycle you see the bicycle is pretty big for this to happen and it's not an, a, a coincidence there's a theorem telling you that this happens if the bicycle is is, is big or what, rather the other way around if the bicycle is small say but the other is big Actually, it's not an if and only. If the bicycle is small, you'll have a hyperbolic. If it's big, uh, there can be different things. But in particular, uh, if you want it elliptic, the bicycle has to be big. OK, move on. Trivial monodromy. 
Is it possible that you'll have trivial monodromy? Remember, this is the one from the beginning. So can you have trivial monodromy? Meaning it doesn't matter how you start, OK, in which orientation you start riding, the back wheel will always uh, close up. So this is a pretty simple uh, answer to, to, I mean, it's a simple question to answer. That yes, it's possible. It's very easy to come up. And that's how we came up with it. You take, for example, a circle. If you ride around the circle with a big bicycle, one loop, it's going to be a rotation. You can calculate it. It's a, okay. But if you, if you, but if you are, take the correct bicycle length and you ride around, it will be a rotation by sort of a rational angle, a rational multiple of, of 2 pi. So if you ride enough times, it will close up. It doesn't matter how you start, because you see, because the monodromy is a rotation. Multiple of the rotation, the correct the multiple of the correct rotation will be the identity. And that's exactly how we came up with this. Uh, see, you see, so this. So actually, I start with this horizontal sort of initial orientation. But you can see, you can convince yourself very easily that if I just rotate it a little bit, the initial orientation, I can just rotate the whole picture. Because of the symmetry, it will also close up. So, so that's that's how it is. This is a, this is the bicycle monodromy of a four tuple, sort of four times a circle, with the correct length. It will be trivial, okay? And there is a spectrum of correct length for which it is trivial. And this is spectrum is interesting. All right, for a circle we figure it out. For other ones we don't know. It's but it, but it's interesting situation of. Which, the, the sp not the interval, there are going to be some discrete, there are going to be some special values of bicycle length for which the monodrome is trivial. Okay, and here we see just one sort of value of this spectrum for a four tuple circle. All right, we analyzed carefully for all n tuple circles what's happening. That's, I'll show you some diagrams. Further on, okay. So that's trivial monodromy for a four-tuple circle in this picture. Very pretty pictures you get from this simple question. Here is a theorem that, that I was referring to before. This was a conjecture for I don't know, like hundred years, and it tells you exactly what I said before that that if you are riding with a small enough bicycle, you fix the curve. With a small enough bicycle, uh, it will be hyperbolic. You will have two. Uh, closed back tracks. And it tells you that it's the same thing with the circle. What happens in general is the same thing that happens in a circle. In a circle, you can analyze it carefully, and you can see that if, you are, if the bicycle has the radius of the circle, it is parabolic. If it's smaller, you'll have two fixed uh, points. If it's bigger, no fixed point. You cannot close up. And, it's, uh, and it tells you that it's a general situation. If you just take the area of the circle, happens, happens in general, OK, for convex curves. It's, uh, it's an elementary, but non, highly non-trivial uh, proof. All right. A good uh, project for the summer for undergraduates to, to, write, to read this proof of. Uh, this is the, 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 ref, the article I referenced in the beginning. So the first one, that's where they prove it. And Actually, I think it's the first article that showed that the subject is worth attention. Right? There are some interesting theorems, not just definitions and pictures. OK, here's another theme that comes up, a very uh, simple theme that actually rose in different guises uh, during the years. You see, for some pairs of curves, I cannot answer this question, which way the bicycle went. I call them like ambiguous pairs. Why? Because for, I, I show you, for example, but very specially designed, a pair of circles, concentric circles, will have this. Uh, you see, I'm showing you. I can. I don't know if you understand. See here. This is the, remember. This is the back. This is the front. So I can write this in this direction, orating. Yeah, this is the back track. This is the front track, and I can orient my bicycle like this, and then write. Clockwise, uh, clockwise, yes. Or this same pair permits, if I just do the same exercise I did in the puzzle in the beginning, permits to do it the other way, the other way around. Bicycle initially like 
counterclockwise. So I don't know which way the bicycle. I cannot deduce without any further help of arrows or something. I cannot deduce from the picture, from the static picture itself, what's going on. I mean, which way the bicycle went. Okay. So this is called. I call it ambiguous bicycle path. There are many other names, depending. This turns out to be this question came out, mathematically the same question came out in completely different contexts. Okay, there's one, pr uh, I will not show this, but I just tell it, say it fast. There's a problem of Ulam, very famous, not solved yet, about floating bodies. Which bodies can float, float in, our, in equilibrium, in water, in arbitrary orientation? The sphere, of course, you take a uniform ball, of some lighter than water material, some wood, and you can orient it any way you want, and it will always stay like that. Right? A two dimensional version of this question, I just, the three dimensional version is not solved yet. We don't have any example other than a sphere. Yeah, the question if there's any other figures other than the uniform ball. Uh, so, so we don't know it in, the, in general, but in two dimension we know it. And the question is exactly that. <laughs> right, it's interesting, uh, 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 and that. So, okay, going back to bicycling, forget about floating bodies. Uh, it's also another something about moving electrons in some magnetic field. There's another interesting interpretation of exactly the same mathematical question. Are there any other examples of ambiguous pairs other than concentric, two concentric circles? And the question is yes. Here is a physicist who investigated, actually is showing us, you can look up its website, and he's showing actually the three different formulations, which I just mentioned. One is in bicycling, one is in floating body, and the third one is something with magnetic fields. And these are examples of figures. You have pairs. He doesn't use the code blue and red, but black and red, close enough. So, and you can see, and the bicycle is green. And uh, yeah, so, in our language, uh, okay, we'll just leave it like that. Okay, so this is, this is fascinating. This actually is, is, is a whole lecture subject by itself. I will not. I will just now I'll give you quick reference to different subjects. Uh, I want to move on to three dimension, but uh, before that, I have to show you some it's very central uh, bicycle an interesting transformation of bicycle curves, uh, totally unexpected, but it is related to this business of ambiguous curves. So, okay, so here is a definition, probably the main sort of non tree This monodromy thing, if you think about it, is pretty obvious, right? Whenever you have a bicycle, you have an ODE, so you look at its flow, you look at it as a monodromy. This is not obvious definition. And we call it bicycle correspondence, but during the years it appeared, we now realize, we look back, Darbu, yeah, the expert on surface geometry, defined it something background. Two bicycle, two curves, two closed curves, two blue curves, right? This is our prime. Okay. I mean, the two blue curves two are in bicycle correspondence with parameter 2A. So it, it's what the picture shows and the text says. What happened? I'm leaning here or something. OK, so um, yes, I have an animation here showing this. So they have this special property that they have like a common closed back track, back path. You see? This red path serves as a red path for bike riding along both curves, the, the solid blue and the dotted blue. OK? That's that's a definition. But you can reformulate it dif uh, in di different ways. You sort of, another formulation about it doesn't mention the, the red guy, yeah, just the, the two blue guys, the main characters. Another way to say it is that uh, you fix a point on one of the curves, and you take kind of a stick. You take a uh, of length 2L, twice the bicycle length, and 
you sort of you you move it you, you can see for two curves typically you can move it's you know one point on one curve one point and just slide it along right but the condition that has to be satisfied is the following that if you look at the midpoint of this uh, kind of double bicycle this stick, stick of length 2l if the midpoint always moves tangent to the instantaneous position of this segment of length 2l right because there's a wheel there there's the common back wheel and it cannot slide so if you you see so it's always tangent so anyway you you understand this bicycle correspondence correspondence business this picture is supposed to help you okay so that's definition and now comes the theorem that justify this uh, definition the theorem the main theorem here is that you have if you have two um, okay formulation I mean not so good Luis scolded me yesterday uh, so uh, <laughs> so imagine forget about the maybe do I have a picture no, another theorem. Sorry. Okay. So if you have, it's, it says the following: that you have two. Suppose you have two curves, and they're in bicycle correspondence. Somehow, some bi of some bicycle length, maybe two kilometers. Okay, bicycle length that connect this curve here and a curve on the other side of town. They're sort of related by this bicycle correspondence. Now it says that they have the same monodromies for any bike length. Right? If I ride a bike of size one meter around one and I look what is the monodromy, it's the same as the bicycle monodromy for the other one, the other side of town, riding a bicycle of length one or length two or whatever length. Okay? That's what it says. So you have two, bi two curves, gamma one and gamma two, which are in some bicycle correspondence or some bicycle fixed bike length to L, then they have the same lambda by lambda, just another, I need another letter, okay? So um, then all their bicycle monodromies coincide, of course, up to conges, because you see, there's, no, there's no meaning. Okay? The proof is extremely interesting, visual, but I cannot give it here in no time, okay? They're using some nice concept, we call it Darbu butterflies, and there's all kind of animations, but. Okay, so this is the main uh, theorem that makes this magic of bicycle core subject uh, interesting, in my opinion. Okay, and there, there is a theorem, a very technical technical theorem that makes that that makes the whole thing, you know, some commutative diagram. Okay, you 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 bicycle corresponds with one length and another length. You can do it in the other order. Very easy to swallow for mathematicians. Uh, see. But it's uh, it's um, you have to be careful because they are not transformations; they are correspondences. You see, uh, uh, you don't, you cannot transform a bicycle a curve by, by this bicycle correspondence because that typically, if there are any, there are two back tracks. Each one of them will produce you another one. So it's we call it correspondence, not transformations. Okay, continue. All right, uh, using this notion, so here our example, so now we take these multiple circles, this twice circle, three times, four times circle, do you remember this guy? Without the dotted one, this is the one I showed you, four times circle, and here is the, now I do show the, bi the, the, the curve that you get by bicycle correspondence. And uh, you see, in each case, in each case that you see here, the dotted one is in bicycle correspondence with the solid one, well, multiple solid one. And so they have the same sort of spectrum. They have the same uh, monodromy, although they look extremely different. And the main thing that this using this construction and this Bianchi permutability, this commutativity, we can. This is the, the easiest way to produce ambiguous curves, right? To solve, to give a positive solution to this Ulam problem uh, in the plane. Okay. All right. It's becoming technical, so I start going faster. Huh? That's. <laughs> 
<laughs> Let's move on to 3D bicycling so you can relax. More pictures, no less formula. So uh, 3D bicycling, what does it mean? Okay, in any in Rn, you can do the same thing. You can take a curve in Rn, right? So in, th in R3, and you take a line segment and just make sure that the you know you follow it one end following the curve, blue curve now in three space, and the other end tracing some red curve, right? But you make sure that the that the segment is always tangent to the red curve at each moment. So this may be like kite flying, right? You're dragging a a kite, you know, you're running around with a kite, and it's okay. So that's, that's, I call it 3D by Y. And, and you can play exactly the same game. So now you have, for example, in 3D, so there are a sphere, a two sphere of possible initial orientation and ending up with an, so you have a map from a sphere to a sphere, in general from the n minus one sphere to the n minus one sphere, right? And actually a simple calculation shows that this, uh, map is always is also Mabius transformation. Yeah, you write the equation, you get kind of a Riccati equation. The uh, easiest perhaps is to do is to write if you do it in three in three dimension, you write uh, you put kind of a complex coordinate on this sphere. You think of it as a Riemann sphere. You took and you write a complex coordinate on it. The same thing in this stereographic projection, and you see that you get a complex Riccati equation. So, so it's okay. again, it's a projectivization of a linear a system, two-dimensional two linear system, and so uh, the monodromy is. Um, see, here it have an interesting interpretation. Now, the Mobius transformation of of the two sphere, it has, it is, it's, it's, it's a great group. Okay, it has beautiful group as. And it has many. Diff it appears in different subjects of mathematics. Okay, here it actually the conformal transformation of the sphere. Right, we know this. There are also the you know the holomorphic transformations of, of the sphere. Okay, and if you think of the sphere as the as the sphere in infinity of the hyperbolic three space, like say a hyperbolic three ball. So it's exactly what you get from the isometries of the three ball. Right, that was the idea of many people, Thurston, that the that, that transformal transformation of the sphere are actually what happens in infinity when you act inside the three space, three, three, uh, hyperbolic three space. This is also very relevant to our subject, but I will not pursue this. So ignore this point here. Okay. Now we do we 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 we, we play the following game. We take a take a curve in a plane. So it becomes kind of I think the, the most fun part. You take a curve in a plane. Let's look at ellipse with elliptic monodromy. I mean, there's no closed back tracks. Big bicycle. Remember that situation when I tried to look for uh, orientation with a big bicycle and I couldn't find. Okay, let's do that. But now I have another sort of degree freedom. I can, I can view of this this plane is put in three space, so that I have I can allow initial orientations not planar. You see, a, a maybe transformation from the sphere to the sphere always have six points. Yeah, a quadratic polynomial with complex coefficients always have a root. So there's always a fixed point, but a fixed point, I mean this. Doesn't have to be horizontal orientation. What does it mean in bicycling? This is what it means. You have to lift the back, the back wheel. Okay. If you lift the back wheel, and I got carried away looking for such pictures, I found even that. Okay. So here is an animation showing what's happening. Let's see if it works. No. This is mathematical. All right. So, uh, it's too big. Something happens when you switch from even smaller. Okay. All right, so we start with um, give me a second. All 
Okay, so here is the planar curve, the blue curve. And I'm looking at bicycling around with a short bicycle. So that's as we've seen before. Let's ride along. And I'm showing actually the what the bicycle. Actually, you see the cusps. If it's short enough, there will no, be no cusps. But okay, so all right. So that's we have we have one. Uh, there's another one. Actually, the, 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 it's hyperbolic, so there is another one. Here's the other one, okay? There are two uh, back curves. What time I started in, in the end? I have to finish in five minutes? Five minutes, five minutes, okay. All right, now I'll make the bicycle longer until I reach a parabolic and then beyond. Okay, so... I make it longer, longer, and here is parabolic, okay? Remember, zero length. And now beyond, what happens if I go beyond? There's still something happening, but what's happening? Well, we are not seeing because we have to look at three dimension. Oops. Why? Okay, I think he doesn't like, I have to stop it. Oh, he's calculating, integrating numerically. Okay, you see what's happening? You see it, it's longer, the bicycle is longer, it doesn't fit. So it has to go to three dimensions, so you get, so, so here it, right? This is how you ride a bicycle around the, with a big bicycle, too big a bicycle. So you have to lift the back wheel. And that's how it looks like. If I make it longer, I have to lift even more. Okay. So that's the idea. Okay. Good. Back to presentation. I have to wrap up this thing. Shook. Yes. Good. Okay. So it's another. There is a formula that justifies several things that I said before. It's, in, it's a nice formula. We call it berry face formula. It's a, it's a formula that I call the derivative of this. You know, so it's a map from the sphere to the sphere, the monodromy. And if you have a closed back track, you have a fixed point, as I said before. And so you can calculate the derivative at this point. The derivative at this fixed point will tell you basically the conjugacy class of this monodromy. Okay, it's a nice, simple exercise, linear algebra. So, um, so the formula tells you is this formula, right? It's a complex number, right? It's a derivative of a holomorphic map. So it's it's a complex number. It has a real part, and well, like it's kind of polar the composition. And in the formula, you see the interesting in the geometric ingredients. L, the capital L, is the length of the back track. But remember. The algebraic length. When we're going backwards, we have to count. We have to subtract the length. You can have a non-trivial curve with zero length. And this is an area. What is the area? Is that you can look at a bicycle, right? You move around and you just translate it like a Gauss map. You map it to, to to the sphere, the bicycle direction. So it sweeps a curve, some closed curve, right, on the sphere, and it has an area inside that goes into this formula. So that's weird. Why, why we call it Barry's face formula, because usually they they go like that. So we drive a consequence, you see? What happens if it's a pla this applies in particular to planar curves? So if you have a planar curve, the area that you are, uh, that you are sweeping, uh, the R is, uh, you know, it's... It's either nothing or, or a hemisphere, like 2 pi. So e to the i 2 pi is 0. So this whole thing dies. right? For planar thing, this e to the i a is 1. So and then if you're parabolic, the derivative has to be 1. So this has to be 0. So the length has to be 0. So that explains exactly why we've seen for parabolic cases, you have to see these diamond shapes that the kind of balanced and also you can be this you can count the number of cusps and 
it's another it's a nice uh, application of this formula another application of this formula so this is what I said another application of this formula is you remember this circle circles and we are look multiple circles and I look for this spectrum this bicycle length for which it is uh, the monodrome is trivial the you can fuss around with equations, but it's immediate consequence of this very phase uh, formula. Don't have time, so I will not show you, but it's, it's very elementary. Okay, homework. <laughs> All right, I do kind of very fast forward, and I show you. And what's the homework is? What the hell is going on here? <laughs> right. There is a circle, there's a multiple circle. And I think it's a five fold circle. It says if it's a five fold circle. Yeah, the picture repeats itself after the point here at the bottom goes around five times. And this is the the curve that it generates. You know, this is kind of the two L. This is the two L, this this edge and the at the bottom is generating this curve in bicycle correspondence with this five-fold circle. And then we apply this magic of this Bianchi permutability, which I didn't say much about. And then we get 3D curves in bicycle correspondence with these planar curves. And the, all these curves have happily have the same monodromy up to conjugation. And there is this red curve. And I almost told you what's everything. But here is this. This is the, the object that makes this permutability works. Is this we call it Darbu butterfly? And my time is over, so I leave you homework for the reader. And here's some further themes I didn't mention. Uh, using this formula of this this very phase formula, you can make a bicycle, big bicycle, small curve, into an instrument. Planimeter. You can measure the area of curves. Okay, not very precise, but it's actually the most very simple to build. You know, planimeter before in, in museums, in science museums, you can see them all kind of gadgets with balls and wheels and stuff. No, nothing of that. Just something that slides around, and you can. Okay, actually, the the, inter the original interest, 19th century interest in this sort of mathematics here, came out from this. People were looking for design of planimeters. This article I mentioned at the beginning from 2009 of Mark and Sergei, Mark Levin, Sergei Tabashnikov uh, explains this very nicely. Another, I just hinted about this subject, oops, in a moment, in a moment. Uh, I hinted at this subject. There's a lot of hyperbolic geometry going on. Uh, there's another interpretation of this bicycling this, you can think of it as describing the rolling of the hyperbolic, if in the plane, it's the hyperbolic disk, you roll it uh, ro along the hyperbolic plane, so such things exist, mathematicians, you know, come up with everything. So, uh, and if you want to describe this, the, the mathematical model for this rolling of hyperbolic plane or ball in three space, on, on Euclidean space, is the same thing, is the same math. And, um, but the most exciting thing, I th in my opinion, is this uh, business coming from this uh, bicycle correspondence. It's still a conjecture, what it says here. There's the article of Sergei, which is this preprint I, I mentioned that was put up this year, explained this. Uh, it's a com there is a completely integrable system, infinite dimensional, like integrable system. Uh, hiding behind here, right? We take a curve. I'd say it very quickly. You take a curve in three space, and you take one of these back curves. So you get a vector field, right? Well-defined periodic sort of vector field. There are two of them, typically, vector field. This vector field, you use it to flow the curve. Yes, but now this vector field depends on the bicycle length. You can take a kind of a serial series of this vector field in, in the bicycle length. In fact, uh, the, the correct thing is to do the reciprocal of the bicycle length, doesn't matter. So you get a whole series, infinitely many vector fields, naturally defined, no 
uh, along every closed curve. This vector fields define the flow on a space of curves in three space and the claim with this flow with the correct symplectic structure and everything is a, is a completely integrable flow and there are many good indications this is the case and because there's a relation very with a famous uh, such uh, curve evolution flow called the filament equations a very old and classical subject now and it turns out it seems like that the, f that the filament equation is nothing but uh, riding a bicycle with a, with imaginary length, something like that. In a formula, you change L to I times L, and puff, magic you comes. So it seems that it seems that this is the situation. More details. Look up the preprint of uh, Sergey. It's fascinating. I don't understand half of it, but it's still fascinating. And now, in the end, this is it. And I even there's an, another one. There's a present. I will say, let's see. The music. <laughs> <laughs> you like music? All right, thank you. <laughs> Feliz cumpleaños. Okay. All right. Okay, now serious. Let's get serious, huh? Ask good question. <laughs> Most two 
back words. Any front, any front word. Given that it's a that you already know that it's a front curve. Two. If you already know that it's a front curve. But what if you give I if I give you a curve and I don't know if it's a front curve of anything? Or any curve. If you clear it, it's always long. It's, it's okay, it's a curve. You can write it on any, any curve. No problem. You can write it on any curve. You get an ODE. And you take the one drawing to ODE. It's a famous transformation. And the data that you put in is the back curve, is that right? You put in the back curve and you take the tangents. I thought it was the front curve with an initial orientation. Take the, the front curve. For any initial, that is an OD. Oh, so I, for I, any, I missed the beginning. For any, and then, so forget about the OD. So what I need to do? Take a curve. You take the front curve. Take a, a guy and a key with a bike. But I don't have you a bike. You draw a curve. curve. You, 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 you orient his bicycle. Her bicycle the reason initially in any way you want. Yes. You tell him, write it off. Yes. That's all. And then you trace, you put some red paint on it on the deck wheel, and you trace this what was the 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 what the OD describing what I say. Okay. So it's very curve. easy to derive. And that's that's it. Okay. No restriction on the front wheel. On the deck wheel curve, it's not a usual thing, but you can also do you can also uh, with the same thing, you, you, you take you take any curve you want, right? Classics and all. You have to sort of okay. orient it, okay. make it precise. That's the only thing that you have to do. Some uh, choice. And so I mean, you put a bicycle, you have to decide which way it's going. And you just take this uh, take this tangent from fixed length. Yes, sir. Yes. And look at the, at the other point, what it leaves. This will be the Thank front you. curve corresponding to the spread. Thank you. So there's no condition. You know, okay. Geometry is defined locally, so then you're looking for a global 